Hey guys, it's Nolan. Welcome to Nolan Live. This is the first episode. I'm super excited to get started. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm sorry if it's a bit lengthy. Um, I just wanted to fit everything in. Uh, I feel it's important to fit everything in. So um, let's get started. So as you might have been able to tell from the title, um, this vlog is going to be about my coming out story. And I feel it's important to talk about that, especially right now, because it's Pride Month, and also it's my first video. So it's a way for you guys to kind of get to know me a little bit better and um, just acquaint yourselves with me through the camera and through your screens. So sit back, relax, enjoy. I hope it's good. Um, I'm going to try and uh, make this as quick as possible, but there's a lot to it. It's a story. So stay tuned with me and uh, let's go. So I'm going to be starting this story with a bit of a throwback to 2009, 2010. So my grade seven year. Um, that's when all of this kind of started, when, you know, the thoughts uh, began, you know, began really. There's no way to explain it other than I started thinking about it more and more and started discovering things about myself. So we're going to go back to grade seven, which is 13 year old Nolan. Um, so it was the summer before grade seven when I started realizing that I was having different thoughts, that I wasn't, you know, like everyone else, liking girls and, you know, crushing on them and all that sort of stuff. And so I went into my first day of school in grade seven, not knowing where I was really. Uh, it was a new school, a bunch of new people. I still had some of my old friends, but, um, you know, it was a new experience. Uh, so these thoughts started becoming more and more, more real for me. Uh, I started noticing that I was, you know, finding guys more attractive than girls. And most boys my age back then at 13, you know, are like super, they're teenage boys. What do you expect? They're super, you know, looking at girls. They're, they're wanting to crush on them. They're wanting to date them. It's all a brand new experience. Hormones are flying. But I didn't have that. I didn't have that, you know, chasing after girls type of mentality. I had, you know, what the hell am I thinking? I'm into guys, I guess. I started questioning myself. Why am I looking at boys more than I'm looking at girls? Is there something wrong with me? And in reality, there really wasn't. But you have to think, I'm only 13 and I had no idea what that meant. Those were initial thoughts in my head. But despite having, you know, confusing thoughts, I decided it would be better to bury them deep into a grave, six feet under, so I could never think about it again. And sure enough, that's what I did, and uh, put them aside, didn't think much of them. And within the first few months, I had a grade seven girlfriend. Uh, it was nothing serious. I mean, are really any grade seven relationships serious? I don't think so. But you know, it was what it was. Uh, and she was, you know, everything that, uh, you know, a straight boy would look for, I guess. She was pretty, she's super nice, uh, still is to this day, by the way, nothing's changed. But um, yeah, and we started dating for a couple of months. Uh, it was only four or three months where we were seeing each other, you know, and all my guy friends, you know, kept asking me, hey, dude, like, when are you going to make a move? When are you going to, you know, when are you going to kiss her? Have you kissed her yet? And in my head, I was going, no, I haven't kissed her yet. I don't plan on doing it. Um, you know, that wasn't something that I wanted to do. It was kind of like a thing where I was like, Ugh, no, I wasn't attracted to the idea, not because it was her, but because it was me. And, um, so I kind of just brushed those thoughts aside and, you know, never really moved on them. And I think after three to four months, we stopped seeing each other, if you want to say that. And, uh, life went on. I wasn't more upset than that. It was grade seven, you know, but it was what it was, but it wasn't long after that that I started realizing, why did I not want to kiss her? Um, and, you know, the more I thought about it, the more it made sense to me that I just didn't want to. I wasn't attracted to the idea of doing so. Don't get me wrong. Um, you know, I would have if I had been straight, but, you know, I wasn't. And I lied to myself for a really long time about that. So, you know, the more I thought about it, I came to the conclusion that I was gay. And I didn't, you know, give it more thought than that. It was just what it was. As my Aunt Sharon would have said, it is what it is. I had no one to talk to. I was only 13. So I, you have to think I'm all alone while this is happening, as most people are uh, when they're discovering, you know, their sexuality or their sexual orientation. And um, I thought I was completely crazy. I thought I was going crazy. But, you know, nonetheless, I continued. 
and grade seven went on. So as grade seven went on, uh, as the year came to an end, I felt the need to tell someone because, you know, when you're thinking about things all alone, you tend to go crazy, a bit crazy. So that's what I did. I told my best friend at the time, hey, I just want to tell you something and it's huge for me, but I'm gay. And the reaction I had was, you know, nothing but supportive. A hug, you know, I'll always be there for you, she said. And, um, you know, I felt a sense of relief because I didn't know that there was this huge type of boulder on my shoulder and I didn't know how to feel, but I felt exhilarated. That's how I felt. I felt excited. I felt happy. As most people, I think, are when they tell someone, you know, they get that, you know, good support, that, that happy reaction. And so, you know, that weight was lifted off my shoulders and it was huge, a huge relief. I carried on with, you know, it being only my best friend knowing that I was gay uh, up until I reached high school. And as I matured, that's when things started getting a bit tough. And I don't mean tough in the way where... I was being bullied or anything like that. I never was. I never was bullied. Um, but, you know, I started seeing news stories about young boys my age at the time, you know, committing suicide because they were being tormented and bullied at their schools and they couldn't take it anymore just for, you know, them being themselves, just for them being gay. And that that thought, that that reality sunk in and it sunk in deep. And that's when I buried those thoughts again and I buried them deep because I kind of lied to myself and I said it's just a phase and I think a lot of people who are you know part of the LGBTQ plus community go through that is it just a phase is it am I being crazy here and that's exactly what happened that's exactly what I did and that scared the living hell out of me and I remember going to my best friend and saying don't tell anyone you cannot tell anyone because if you do you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen. Just please, please keep it between you and I. And if, she said, of course, why would I tell anyone? And she never did. So I took this idea of a phase and I ran with it. And I decided to experiment, not in a sexual way, I promise. <laughs> I was only a teenager and that idea wasn't in my head yet. But, you know, I decided, you know what, let's try and get a girlfriend. It wasn't a strategy or anything like that. I just, you know, was, you know, starting to talk to girls again. And I remember I was talking to this one girl. And uh, this was in my grade 10. So grade 9 had passed, there was no action, but grade 10 showed up and uh, and uh, I started talking to this girl and she was super nice and super pretty and, you know, we started chatting and soon enough we started dating. Uh, and in grade 10, you know, relationships are a bit of a more serious thing. That's when you have, you know, maybe your first kiss or maybe, you know, your first date or whatever you want to, whatever you want to label it. But... Yeah, so we started dating, and uh, things were going fine, uh, but still again, I had those thoughts lingering in my head. Not the thoughts of being gay, but the thoughts of, I don't want to kiss her, I didn't want to hang out with her, and it wasn't because I didn't want to or because I didn't like her. I actually really liked her, and I believed that I really liked her, and I thought, yeah, you know what, it totally was a phase, but it really wasn't. So we never hung out. Um, we only hung out, I think, three or four times, and I kept avoiding it with my life. And I never kissed her. And after I think it was four months, uh, she broke up with me, understandably. And I don't blame her. I would never blame her. Who would want to be stuck in that type of relationship? And, um, you know, that happened. And that's when something clicked. And that's when I realized, you know what? There's something There's something that I need to be real with myself about. And that was the fact that I was gay. And I, and I always knew it, but I always buried it deep. Shortly after that, I knew I couldn't pretend to be someone else, someone who I wasn't. And that's when the idea in my head began to take hold and to be comfortable with it. Yeah, I started being comfortable with it. And I had a really good group of friends. And I started telling them one by one because I wanted to and because I felt that was the right thing to do. And keep in mind that I hadn't told my family at this point. That hadn't crossed my mind yet. I didn't know how to tell them. I didn't know how to approach them. And... One by one, the reaction was all the same. A big hug, you know, a cheer of support. You know, we'll always be there for you, Nolan. Don't worry, this stays between you and I. And I kind of just want to go off topic for a second. And those people know who they are. And if you're watching right now, I just want to tell you, you know, thank you so much. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. It was... 
I don't have words. I really don't. It means the world to me that you were there for me and that I was able to tell you. So I was telling my close friends my biggest secret, except for two people, and those were my two, you know, guy friends in, in that group. And I'll say they're my best friends to, still to this day, and they know now. And I told them in my first year of university, and it was a great reaction, you know, support. And, you know, even one of them said, I already knew, nothing changed. So, you know, I, I didn't tell them because I was scared. As a gay boy, um, you're always scared what straight guys will think of you. You know, will they judge you? Will they want to hang out with you? Are they going to want to avoid you? You know, the stereotypical type of, of stuff. So I kept telling my close friends, and I had a big group of close friends, and eventually they all kind of knew except for those two guys. And, you know, with, with telling people, there's always that risk of it being told to someone else. And, and that's what happened. I don't know who, I still don't know who to this, and I really don't care. Nothing ever came of it. I was never bullied or never, you know, confronted about it, uh, thankfully. I know that's not everyone's reality. But, you know, rumors started spreading, and I heard about them. And they weren't so much rumors to me, they were kind of the truth, but I wanted to them I wanted them to keep keep themselves at rumors, to be rumors, because I didn't want people to know. I didn't want my whole school to know, because then that would get to my family. And I hadn't told my family yet. How bad would that look? And I always kinda had this I not this idea, but this this notion that everybody already knew and that it was just kind of an understanding. Even though no one ever told me, hey, you're gay, or are you gay? No. I just kind of knew, I just kind of felt like everyone knew. And when I came out officially last year, that was kind of of confirmed to me that people just kind of understood that I was gay and no one really cared. So when grade 12 rolled around, the idea of telling my family became serious. There was a huge, huge amount of pressure imposed by myself to tell them. And I never did in my grade 12 year, I never did because I never had the courage to. You know, I wasn't scared that they would throw me out of the house or, you know, never talk to me again. I, I, I never thought that. I mean, my mom, her best friend is gay. And my dad, you know, is not a judgmental person in that way. I was just scared of the unknown, as everyone is. Um, I didn't know what the reaction would be, even though I figured it would be something positive. I just didn't know. So I graduated grade 12 in 2015 and was heading off to Ottawa for university. And that's where I am right now. Um... But I was really excited. It was a new chapter in my life. And going there, you know, I kind of left high school and all that kind of, you know, idea that being gay was weird or bad. And uh, I came to university and it was like, you know what? I really don't care if people know. And that was because people didn't know me. So people would meet me for the first time and know, hey, he's gay. But I never really got to that. I never got to telling people that I was. Um, but I saw a lot of, I, I started meeting a lot of people who were, you know, in the same community as I was and who were in the same position as I was. And we had discussions and we talked. So it wasn't long to my first university, uh, year, I think it was September that I met Nate. Uh, he's my boyfriend, uh, still is. And, um, you know, things were taking off pretty quickly with Nate and things were getting really serious in a good way. I hadn't experienced this before. I never, I never had a relationship with a boy before. This was all new territory to me. But it was, it was not soon into this relationship that I knew that I loved him, and I was falling head over heels before you knew it. And you know, he's such a great guy, and he's absolutely incredible. And I wouldn't want to be with anyone else. Um, but things were getting serious with me, and I felt that I wanted to share that with the world. I wanted people to know that I was so happy. I was head over heels that, you know, I was with the greatest guy ever and and no one could tell me that that was wrong. But I wasn't, I wasn't able to tell people because I wasn't officially out of the closet, if that's how you want to put it. I hadn't told my family yet or, or the world for that matter. So Christmas came around and this was Christmas 2015. And I kind of had this idea in my head that I was going to tell my parents and my family. And sure enough, I did. So I think it was after Christmas, uh, you know, a couple days after, and I was driving in the car with my brother, and something just came over me, and I was like, hey, I want to tell you something, and I started crying, because I didn't, I, I don't know what came over me, I just started crying, and he kind of already knew, and, and that's when he said, Nolan, if you're gay, just tell me, I won't care, you're my brother, I'll always love you, well, holy cow, there were 
there were more tears than there were before. It was Niagara Falls. And I'm driving. I had to pull over because it was just, there was just so much I couldn't see. And I said, well, I am. And he said, cool. I don't care. And he said, I noticed you've been acting a bit weird. And I was. I was acting. I knew I was acting weird because I was stressed. I didn't, I wanted to tell them, but I didn't know how. So after my brother, the next person that I wanted to tell was my mom. And this was all in the same night. So I get home, I tell my brother, can you just chill upstairs for a bit? I want to go talk to my mom. And my mom, my mom was downstairs in her bedroom getting ready for bed, I think. And I came in, I said, hey mom, can I talk to you? And she said, yeah, sure, what's up? And knowing my mom, she was immediately concerned. She thought something was wrong and you could see it in her face. And so we sat down on her bed and I kind of just said, mom, I'm gay. And in that minute, my world completely froze. I, I... I was as still as possible, and I don't even think I was breathing in that two seconds between me telling her and her reaction. And within two seconds, I saw my mom's face light up with the biggest smile, and she said, you are? And I said, yeah. And she came over and gave me the biggest hug ever. It was like a bear hug. And I was just, you know, elated. I was like, oh. Thankfully, you know, she didn't have a poor reaction. I didn't, I didn't think, again, that I didn't think she was going to have a poor reaction, but I was scared. You know, every gay kid is when they're coming out to their parents. So, uh, so she said, well, do you want to tell your dad? And I said, yes, I do, but I don't know when and I don't know how. And it's not because I thought my dad was going to judge me or treat me differently, but it's my dad, you know, and, uh, it goes back to that notion that straight boys are a little weirded out by gay guys. Not everyone. I'm not saying that's a common thing, but it was just the idea in my head. And um, she said, well, let's just talk to him tonight. So this was all on the same night. And I didn't plan on telling everyone in the same night, but that's just what happened. So my dad came home. I think he was off playing hockey that night. And my, you got to think, my dad is a super, you know, straight guy. He is, you know, all for his buddies, for his beer, for his hockey, like his bros. And um, that's just who he is. And I, I, it makes me laugh because it's just, you know, it's funny to think about. So my dad came home. We were all sitting downstairs in our rec room downstairs. And I said, Dad, I need to talk to you. And in that room was my mom and my brother. And I said, I'm gay. And I sat, uh, and again, my world froze because this time I was more scared. But instantly he told me, Nolan, I love you. And, you know, I'll always be there for you. I'll always support you. But it took him a bit more time, you know, to get used to the idea. And I, I was fine with that. I understood that. And that was just a reality of it. Nothing changed, really. And I have to say, now, today, looking back at it today, my dad and I are as close as we've actually ever been in our entire lives. You know, he'll just call me up sometimes and just have a chat, and I'll do the same. And it just makes me so happy. And he starts asking about me. So does my mom. And, you know, it's just that reassurance that, you know, he, he cares and he loves me no matter what. And to my family, you know, thank you for that. That really, that really means a lot. And I'm getting teary. I see what I'm doing to myself here. So after my family, I wasn't scared anymore. I wasn't scared of telling the world. That was the only step left. I just had to tell the world. So I did that in January of 2016, within the first couple of days. I posted a picture on Facebook Simple as that. And I said, it was a picture of Nate and I, and I said, thank you for being by my side for the past four months. You've made me the happiest guy. Something along those lines. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I just told the world. And I did, I was scared, but not as scared as I was telling, first coming out to my family. Within minutes of posting that picture, I was getting text messages, messages, comments, likes, loves, reactions, all on my posts saying, so happy for you, Nolan. Congrats for coming out. That's such a huge step. And that's all I received. I never, I have never, still to this day, never received anything negative from anyone. It's always just been love. And thank you everyone for that. That, that means the world to me. You have no idea. So finally, the person that I am was able to be himself. I was able to be myself. What a weird thought though, that, you know, people being themselves are scared of being themselves. And I really think that's something that needs to change. So that's my coming out story. That's my story. Everyone's is different. And I, I feel it's important to mention that not everyone's as positive like mine. You know, people go through some hard times. People get thrown out of their houses or disowned by their families. And that's 
that's a sad reality, unfortunately. But to those people who are or where I was in high school or in grade school, I want you to know that more often than never, the reaction is positive. The reaction is love. And that's huge. And trust me, when you, when you get that reaction, it's a huge pressure off your shoulders. But not everyone's is like that. If there's anyone listening to this message today that's scared to tell anyone, whether it be your friends, your family, you know, someone you just know. And if you're scared and you don't know what to do, just know that if there's a bad reaction, there's a whole community out here that is ready to, you know, welcome you and to love you and to just, you know, they're ready to accept you with open arms. And that's a true reality. And I just, I've just recently been introduced to this community and they're awesome. We're awesome people. So if you're scared or if you're worried or if you're in a bad place, there are options out there for you. Talk to someone at your school you know, go see a counselor, go to talk, just talk to anyone. And I'm offering that to you today. I want you, if, if you're in a bad spot, please go to my website, nolanlive.com and submit a comment and I will answer you. I can't, I, I won't give you advice or what do, what to, or, or tell you what to do, but I will tell you my story and I'll tell you my experience. And hopefully in doing that, you know, you'll feel a bit more comfortable. But just know that there are people out there who are willing to talk to you and who want to talk to you about this stuff. You're never alone. There are millions of people just like you and I. So that's this week's vlog, everyone. Um, I just want to add one more thing, and this is what I'm going to be doing in my videos. I know this one was long, but I promise this one's going to be short. Uh, and each week, I'm going to be doing different segments. Um, they're going to change week to week. And this week, I thought it would be fun to do a song of the week. And I'm going to try and include this in as many of my vlogs as possible. I want to do this just because I want to introduce to you guys songs that I've been listening to recently and songs that I love. So this week, in honor of Pride Month, um, and in honor of my first video and my favorite artist, this week's song is Vogue by Madonna, which is probably one of the biggest pride anthems ever, and probably one of the biggest, you know, LGBTQ plus friendly artists there is out there. Um, you know, I love Madonna, and I'm not gonna shy away from that. She's she's my idol, love her to death. Uh, I've seen her live once, and I want to see her again. So whenever she goes on tour, you can bet your ass I'm gonna be there. So that's this week's episode for Nolan Live. Check in next Sunday. That's when my, my next vlog is gonna be up. Uh, come come check it out next week to know about the time that I was followed. That's next week's topic. And as scary as that sounds, I promise there's humor to it, so don't worry. See you all next week, and don't forget, it's a good day to have a good day. Thanks everyone, bye.